Hello, all heroes, and welcome back to Invincible Guarding the Globe. Now, probably the most fundamental aspect of this game is getting your characters upgraded. Why? Because the higher level they are, the higher upgrades they have, the stronger they are. And the stronger they are, the more they can beat the snot out of people and throw that lowest red paint around everywhere. But... When you start out, it's a little intimidating for various reasons. I will not deny. There are no less than three currencies required for leveling up a character. Not only that, but to actually unlock all of a character's abilities, it requires a lot of doing, not just from the character you're trying to upgrade, but from allied characters as well. And the game doesn't really explain it in detail at all. I'm going to be honest. The tutorial is a little lacking on that regard. So that's why we're here. We're going to talk about upgrading some characters. So let's go to heroes. And you will notice all of my characters here of varying levels. Let's go to, let's go to robot here. Everybody loves robot. It's a character that um, you can actually get free to play in the game. At least one copy. And I do emphasize one copy because that's going to be relevant there are three currencies you can get this gold one and this blue one i forget what they're called i did not want to go there um i think i can actually go to my inventory and we can take a look at them we have the gda chips and the hero xp you're gonna get Pretty heavy numbers of those two items from your idle rewards, as well as missions you go on. Those are pretty, those are pretty plentiful, especially once you get further on down the line. You'll get those. There is a third currency here in the form of hero special XP. Nine times out of ten, this is going to be your gatekeeper. Every 20 levels or so, you need an amount of hero special XP to kind of get your character beyond that threshold. So for example, for Robot, we're at level 79 right now. I'm actually going to do Omni-Man because I do want to power him up higher while I do have it. We're at level 139. You'll notice down here, I do require 11,000 of the hero special XP. I've saved up 23,000. Never do that. Never wait to upgrade your best characters. I just did it for the sake of video. That's that's just a me thing that I wanted to do. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't wait. So, we're going to go ahead and level up. Boom. Omni-Man is now 140. Now what we can do is we can just hold down level up. Crank this man up all the way up to 159. And you'll notice that pesky little icon has popped right back up. Now needing a whopping 15k. That is going to be your gatekeeper for the vast majority of your experience leveling up characters. We're going to talk about how to get the most efficient amount of that in um, in a second here. But we're going to talk about the other aspects of these heroes first. Because there's more than one type of hero in the game. They're not just characters that you can throw anything on. What you equip to your character depends on... Um, whether they are an attacker, usually focus more so on beating the snot out of enemies, a tank, character that usually has high HP, high defense, and survivability, and then a support, usually going to be um, healing or something to throw off the enemies, kind of some uh, knockback effects or other um, debuff effects. Now, why does that matter for the purpose of upgrading a character? Well, that's because you have gear. Now, gear is not a hard concept to understand, thankfully. But basically, you equip gear, you get higher stats. Pretty standard for most games, and you do thankfully have an auto-equip feature if you do have upgraded gear that you can put on a character and you haven't yet. But the gear is dependent on what type of character it is. This is attacker gear. Monster Girl is a defense character. You can tell by the little purple shield there. And I, Oh, it actually says it right there. I didn't even realize it was up by the level. That's hilarious. Um, Monster Girl, Defender, very bulky. And then Robot over here is a support with the green heart. That designates not only how they typically act in battle, 
but what gear you can equip. Now, in addition to gear, you can equip artifacts. These artifacts, you can kind of get the parts as you play the game, some of them through quests, some of them through the different shops in the game. Basically, these give you stats and they give you special abilities um, depending on which artifact piece it is. I think I only have this one and the uh, Burger Mart Burger here. You get this one for pre-registering, and I didn't technically pre-register, but I think because I'm like a day one player, I guess they just gave it to me. This bad boy is really nice, so I'm hoping that they make this available for all current players as well because it actually it actually kicks some butt not gonna lie the burger mart burger is fantastic but this will give your stats give you abilities and as you do level it up using um artifact xp and artifact fragments the stats that you get will be higher so that is yet another way to crank up your characters however there is one more incredibly important thing to keep in mind, and this is going to be the most intimidating part of the game. If you've played games like AFK Arena, you're probably familiar with this mechanic already, but you'll notice that Omni-Man is currently a rarity called Elite Plus. He can go higher than that. He can go much, 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 much higher than Elite Plus. He can go up to Exceptional, he can go up to Epic, Legendary, Seismic, and Omnipotent if you just have an unholy number of copies. And yes, I said copies. Why did I say copies? Because that is insanely important to level up a character. When you rank them up with copies, you could say, take a copy of Omni-Man and another copy of Omni-Man, combine them, and get an Elite plus Omni-Man. Omni-Man at base is Elite, and most of them will be. Um, in the future, they might release characters that start at higher rarities, which would be kind of neat. Um, but for now, highest starting is Elite. You need two copies of a character to get to Elite Plus. Now, you might say, okay, well, you just need copies of characters to get them ranked up. Easy peasy, right? Easy to understand. No, it's not easy to understand. It's actually dramatically more complicated than that because let's take a look at, um, let's say robot here. Robot is currently elite plus robot currently needs two more elite plus characters to throw into him in order to rank him up to exceptional. Now you might, you know, I mean, could you technically throw in monster girl and immortal? Just having them in there is scaring me to death. You could do that, but that would be a terrible waste of perfectly good elite characters. You don't want to do that. That's a, that's a terrible idea. Never do that. So how do you get them powered up? You need these guys. Rare characters. These are the... I hate to call them scrap characters, but they're fodder. They are meat for the grinder to get your characters leveled up. And you need a lot of them. You need a lot of them because they start out at rare. That's not Elite Plus. That's not even close. To get them to uh, Rare Plus, not even Elite. You gotta get them to Rare Plus first. You gotta take three copies of the character, such as um, Mr. Tether Tyrant here. One, two, three. Hit rank up. And he is now Rare Plus. Not even, not even up to Elite. He doesn't even have the honor of being an Elite yet. Not even close. He is now... Rare plus. Now, from that point, what you can do is you can take him and two more rare plus copies of the same type. And yes, there are types, basically factions to these characters. Tether Tyrant is considered a criminal character, so he needs other rare plus criminal characters to power him up. If you want to know what type of character there are, you can check out this top left symbol here. Omni-Man is Earth's Defenders. Yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Um, Monster Girl here is Global Defense Agency. You can tell by the little blue stars there. Um, let's see here. Of course, we do have Criminal here with the handcuffs. And then we have the From Worlds Beyond faction. Basically, the green little swirl. When you're upgrading characters... They have to be 
the same faction. So for example, if I'm going to upgrade Tether Tyrant here, I need to throw in characters of the same criminal class as him. And I will do that in the future because these, these characters, like I said, the blues meet for the grinder. Once you get him powered up, he will become elite. And then I would need another elite tether tyrant to get him to elite plus, And then I can use him to power up elite plus criminal characters. Now for Omni-Man, for Omni-Man, Mr. Man himself, I would need um, two elite plus Earth Defender characters. Um, I believe that would be um, Aquarius, that would be Martian Man, and that would be uh, Darkwing. Those are the characters I need to power him up. He, he gets to kill him again, basically, just to make himself stronger. And it does not stop there. Like I said, the the sky, for better or worse, the sky is the limit. You can go up to exceptional, you can go up to, a, to epic, and once you hit epic, then you gotta start worrying about stars. And how do you get stars? You need elite plus copies of Omni-Man or Monster Girl, or whoever you're trying to upgrade, that's when you start needing oobles and caboodles of duplicate characters. Now, now, believe me, you will still need faction characters, too. You need to get them up to, like, exceptional plus, just to get that, just to get Omni-Man from epic 5-star to legendary no-star, and then legendary plus, and then legendary star, star, star. It's a lot to comprehend, and the game doesn't really prepare you for that. I will not deny. The tutorial on the rarities spe specifically is pretty... Pretty... I don't want to say it's bad. But then again, for something to be good, it has to exist. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Not only that, but the skills you have, you don't get these from leveling up. You get these from ranking up. So these, this skill, I need to be at Exceptional Plus to use it. This skill, I need to be at epic plus to use it so characters don't even unlock their full range of abilities until they are leveled up to that point however once you do get to that rarity once you are nice and strong then you'll be cooking then you'll really be punching a hole in some people and um getting Lowe's red paint everywhere so uh yeah now as if that's not scary enough you have to actually figure out where to get the dang currency? Because, like I said, there's a lot. And there's a few ways to do it. The easiest way is your idle rewards. This is not a lot. I'm going to be honest. You might even see here the hero special XP is 37 an hour. 37, not 37,000. Uh, 3, 7. Um, I need 15k. I'm not going to try and do the math on how many hours that would be. But it's a lot. This is a drop in the bucket thing where every little bit counts over days and weeks and months and maybe even years. To actually get the materials you need, you're going to want to go to GDA Ops. This is what you farm. This is where you get your materials. What these are basically is these are automatic wave battles that will go on in the background. You don't have to interact with them or do anything. For example, if we go to Downtown Destruction here, you can see I have several characters just throwing down, and I have three hours and 21 minutes left before it's done. We are on wave 78, and they're going to keep climbing. If they get defeated, they respawn. When the enemies get defeated, it goes to another wave. The longer that the, the, the farther they go, the longer they make it in the game, eventually they will hit like a wall where they just can't do anything. But the, the higher they go, the more resources you get when um, that timer runs out. Now, you can abort, and it'll show you your resources here that you'll get. Like, I would get 248, which is a paltry amount compared to the 952 I would get if the timer actually ran out on that wave. So you really only want to abort if you absolutely positively must to, to like, upgrade a character or something. But this one specifically, Downtown Destruction is going to be the one you're going to want to primarily farm because it specifically gives you that all-important hero special XP. Additionally, 
You're also going to want to get these green items here, the access cards. Now, what does that do? That will actually upgrade your uh, GDA ops here because you do need to upgrade those. You can't just, just have it as a one and done and, and that be good because you're not going to get a lot of rewards that way. You actually do need to upgrade this. Now, let's see. I think I can, if we look at this one here, yeah. I've hit my limit on how many I can have going at once. So I can't really start it. But if you go to rank up here, you'll notice some things. The higher you rank up, the more heroes you can throw in, the more rewards it you get, and the more time it takes. And that's not a bad thing. It kind of it kind of feels like a negative thing where it's like, oh, it's going to take longer. But the longer it lasts, the more waves you go through. And the more waves you go through, the more loot you get. And the longer it lasts, the, the less you have to babysit it. This is very much baby's first GTA Ops. You start going into the much longer ones once you get to like downtown destruction and guardians around the globe and that sort of stuff. As you crank these up, as you level up some of these first ones, like training gain, downtown destruction, reanimate, rampage, as you crank up those, you will unlock um, these down here. I haven't unlocked this one yet, but this one gives you artifact XP to crank those up. This bottom one, though, you get for getting reanimate rampage up to um, rank five. And this one's special because it requires a very specific item to use. You do need these little key card things. But when you complete this, you just get blue heroes. You can get any blue, any rare hero of any faction. Any of those you have a chance to get from this. And aside from just full-blown summoning, this is going to be one of your best methods to get those all-important heroes for those all-important rank-ups. Because remember, like I said, you're going to need a lot of them. That's going to be a lot of meat for the grinder. And unfortunately, Duplicate is not going to crank herself out like that on her own. You've got to actually summon Duplicate. You've got to actually summon all of them. It's a long-term goal. As I've said in the previous video, patience is the name of the game. This is not a game that is meant to be played quickly. This is not a game that is made to be that is made to be you know, you're not supposed to hit stage 20 in two weeks or, or, or chapter 20 in two weeks. If you did reach chapter 20 in two weeks, your poor wallet. I mean, why would you do that? Why? No, 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 no. That's not how this goes. You want to take it slow. Slow and steady wins the race in this bad boy. And that applies to leveling up your characters and leveling up their ranks more than anything. So I hope that has cleared it up a little bit. If it hasn't, there is always Reddit. There is an invincible, I hit my light. There is, there is an invincible Reddit. It's r slash invincible GTG. I would personally recommend the, um, the guides from electric seven Titan on there. He has some truly fantastic guides on how to play the game. He's got a breakdown that I'm looking at right now on what you actually need to rank up characters. And there's even tier lists and stuff on the subreddit. So you're going to want to use that if you're playing this game. It is an invaluable resource and can go a long way towards making an intimidating prospect much more feasible. Like I said, there's not really a tutorial on here. But Reddit is excellent for supplementing that. So I would highly recommend there is also the Discord. If you go to the Guarding the Globe website, um, there is a link to the official Discord. Um, you can find help there as well. But that is all we have for today regarding upgrading characters. Hopefully, this helped make it make sense. You're just going to need a whole lot of copies. Just a whole lot of copies but there are ways to get those copies, and if you play it slow and steady, your characters will get stronger and stronger. But that will do it for now. We shall see you next time. Have a good one.